Hey, welcome. My name is Joel Gilbert. Today we're going to talk about how to choose the best PC for SolidWorks. Now there's a ton of options in the marketplace now for workstation class PCs. So we're going to look at how to choose, how to look at the different options that are available to you, and then how to prioritize where to spend your upgrade budget. So first of all, a little bit about me. I've been using SOLIDWORKS since 2013. I've been working here at MLC CAD Systems since 2022. I started my career back in 1998 working in IT, systems administration, systems engineering, tech support, etc. So I've got a long background in working with computer systems in general and over a decade working with SOLIDWORKS. So that gives me a unique perspective on selection of hardware as well as configuration of systems for use of, with SOLIDWORKS. So today what we want to look at is we want to start off by defining our baseline specifications. What is the starting point you want to go with when looking for a computer to run SOLIDWORKS? And then let's look at the upgrade options and how we should prioritize those based on our usage of SOLIDWORKS. And lastly, we're going to talk about a couple topics about maximizing our investment. So first of all, let's define what we consider to be everyday SOLIDWORKS use. That's what this baseline configuration is going to apply to. So for me, I would consider that to be designing parts, designing assemblies with 500 parts or less, so not huge assemblies, and creating drawings that have a total size of less than 50 megabytes. So if this criteria defines how you use SOLIDWORKS, then this base configuration should work well for you. Uh, this could also be used in basic FEA analysis with SimExpress on individual parts in SOLIDWORKS. You're not going to see a ton of improvement going beyond these base specs for these essential uh, ways of using SOLIDWORKS. So the baseline specifications that I recommend, they are higher than what the minimum specifications are, but it's what I consider to be a baseline recommendation for having a good, stable experience with SOLIDWORKS. So the most critical thing is having a good CPU. You want to have a minimum of 5 gigahertz boost or max speed. Uh, CPUs nowadays, the specifications tend to focus more on efficiency rather than maximum performance. So you may have to dig a little in the specs to see what the maximum rating is, but you want to look for that maximum boost or max speed is on the CPU. You want a minimum of 12 cores nowadays because browsers and other applications take up so much CPU time. But if you've got 12 cores or more, you should be in good shape. Having a ton of cores for SOLIDWORKS doesn't make a huge performance difference because it is not natively able to do multi-threading across multiple CPU cores for a single activity. RAM is another important area. You want to have 32 gigs of RAM. You can run it on 16 gigs, but I would recommend 32, and in most use scenarios, 32 is going to be more than enough for the vast majority of users. A GPU simply needs to be SOLIDWORKS certified. Most of the current generation of GPUs are going to be around the 6 to 8 gigabytes of video memory, and that's going to be, again, more than enough for the average user of SOLIDWORKS. Then storage, you want to get at least a 512 gigabyte M2 NVMe SSD drive because by the time you load Windows, SOLIDWORKS, your additional applications that you need, and then start adding SOLIDWORKS files, you're going to find that uh, the default, what, what used to be standard, was about 256 gigs. That's going to fill up really quickly, and it's kind of a pain to have to swap out your main storage drive, either in a laptop or a desktop. And that brings us to the question of should you buy a laptop or a desktop? A laptop or a mobile workstation has a lot of benefits. It's more portable, it's great for working remotely, but it does have a slight performance hit based on primarily on cooling capacity. A desktop just has a lot more space, a lot more breathing room for all the components to allow air to get around the components and cool it down. So you can typically cool a desktop workstation more efficiently and more quietly than you can a laptop. Having said that, if you use the laptop correctly, you set your power settings to use maximum performance and you provide adequate ventilation, there's no reason why you can't use a mobile workstation as a primary SOLIDWORKS machine. I would consider using some sort of a docking station. In particular, I prefer to have my laptop 
have the lid closed and put it in an upright stand. Let's see, I've got one here. <clears throat> I designed this a few years ago in SolidWorks and I've got several of them that I've 3D printed. This is just really cheap PLA material printed on an old Creality Ender 3 printer. You can get anything, make or buy anything that'll hold that laptop upright and it'll allow the air to circulate around the laptop much better than if it's sitting flat on a desk. You do lose the option of losing, of using sorry the built-in monitor with the laptop, but it takes up much less desk space and typically an external monitor is going to give you a better viewing area anyway. So that brings us to the question of what are you going to do for your monitor or monitors? Uh, there, the newer option now is to use a single ultra wide monitor. I actually had one of these probably about seven or eight years ago. It was a Dell ultra wide 34 inch when they first came out. It was a great monitor and I really enjoyed using it. The downside to it is it can be a little harder to manage how your windows are located on the screen and you're typically going to want at least some sort of secondary screen, even if it's small, to put things like your email or reference documents on. Uh, if you're going with dual monitors for desktop workstations, make sure that your GPU has the sufficient output ports and the right types to match the monitors that you're going to use. What I have seen in the past is if a monitor for a desktop workstation is plugged into the built-in uh, graphics port on the motherboard, you can end up with some very strange graphical behavior in SolidWorks because it's running partially through the onboard graphics and partially through the dedicated graphics card. So keep that in mind as you're planning your hardware purchases. So that brings us to the question of, for specific use cases, for specialty areas, what are the additional specs you might want to beef up on your computer? And the first area I want to look at is large assemblies and large drawings. I would define this as assemblies with over 500 parts or drawings with file size greater than 50 megabytes. Keep in mind that you may end up needing to have more RAM capacity for these types of assemblies and drawings. And also keep in mind that just because a drawing is of a smaller assembly or part doesn't necessarily mean it won't be very large in size or require a lot of system resources. Because for each view of the drawing, it is loading the entire model in the background essentially. And so let's say you have a complicated part with a dozen con configurations. Each configuration that has a view in the drawing is going to be loaded into memory with the full file size of the part because it has to load that full configuration in memory so that it can be properly displayed. So keep in mind drawings that have a large number of views, drawings that have a large number of different components and or many configurations for those components are gonna eat up a lot more memory once it's loaded in memory. So keep that in mind. Try to take your most complex and slowest drawings, open them up and check your memory usage and just make sure whether you're going to be okay with 32 gigs or if you want to bump up to 64 gigs of RAM on that system. The next topic I want to look at real quick is rendering. So this is not a super common use case. Most people nowadays seem to be using dedicated rendering services, but if you want to use Visualize or some other third-party tool for doing high quality rendering on a regular basis, you may want to look at upgrading your GPU to maybe a mid-range level, a little bit above the base level. What I will say here is that benchmarks do not show a huge performance improvement from the entry-level GPU to a mid-level or high-level GPU, and they definitely don't show an improvement unless the CPU matches up in terms of speed. So I've seen benchmarks where a GPU that maxes out at 4.5 gigahertz with a very high-end GPU, like a GPU that costs in the eight to $10,000 range, scored worse than the base level GPU, for example, an RTX A1000, I think it is, or A2000, and it had a better score because its CPU had a 5.2 gigahertz max speed. You're still gonna be bottlenecked by that CPU speed if the CPU is not fast enough to keep up with the GPU. And rendering and simulation are both similar in that it's very hard to get good benchmarks because the, the parts or assemblies that you're rendering or doing simulations on can be so different. The settings and the circumstances around which you're performing those 
tasks can vary so wildly that it's very difficult to get accurate benchmarks to tell you what exactly is the performance improvement of adding a dedicated GPU or increasing the capacity of the GPU. In general, you'll tend to get better graphical performance for rendering with a slightly better GPU though. So when it comes to simulation, this could be anything from a static study of an assembly, motion studies, flow sim, fatigue studies, all these kind of more advanced simulation studies, they're typically gonna benefit, benefit most from having additional CPU cores available. I've seen some benchmarks that indicate that up to 128 cores may benefit from, may, some of the benchmarks I've seen indicate that you can see a benefit all the way up to 64 cores with SOLIDWORKS simulation. I've seen one report that indicated that the increases continue, the, the solve time continues to drop as you add uh, CPU cores all the way up to 128, but I've also seen some conflicting reports that say that that's not quite true. So I would say up to 64 cores, you're probably gonna continue to see improvement with each, each core increase that you add to simulation. However, the speed of the CPU cores is still going to be a primary driving factor. So in most cases, you'd still be better off opting for a faster CPU max speed rather than the most core. So if you had a 64 core with a max speed of 4.5 gigahertz, the CPU that has 24 cores but can go up to 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz is probably going to outperform the one with more cores. So keep that in mind. And if the if the machine's specifically going to be used just dedicated as a simulation machine, then I would be more prone to go with maximizing my core count so that you can run multiple simulation studies back to back. However, if you're going to use that same machine to design everyday design work on, you're going to want to have the faster CPU max speed. So that wraps up the main specification suggestions. Now I want to talk about some personal preferences. I mentioned ultra wide monitors. So having one really wide monitor versus two or three monitors, it's really nice in some cases. If your assemblies tend to be a very long or wide, large assemblies, that can be really great to be able to have a better sense of what you're designing. But window positioning can be kind of a pain in the neck. Windows 11 is better, and there are some third-party apps that will help you with pinning window positions, but it's not quite as natural as working with dual monitors and being able to just maximize applications on different screens. The other thing I'll say is you're always going to need more storage than you think you will. So if you think 512 gigabytes is sufficient and it's just a few dollars more for a one terabyte system drive, I would go with the one terabyte. Uh, it's always more difficult to add storage to your main storage device because you have to clone it and then replace it. Whereas increasing RAM capacity typically is a lot simpler. And when it comes to RAM, try to fill all your RAM slots for most efficient bus utilization. So essentially you've got, if you've got four RAM slots, each one of those slots has a maximum transfer capacity and speed back to the CPU. So if you've got 10 gigs of information stored on those RAM sticks, if all four of them are able to send the information at full speed and full capacity, you're gonna get better performance than if you're just using one or two channels to send that information across. And lastly, I would say this, we don't officially endorse one or the other, but typically NVIDIA GPUs have historically been more stable than AMD GPUs for use with SOLIDWORKS or other CAD applications. I will say that the latest gen AMD cards seem to be doing a lot better. We haven't had nearly as many issues with those, but they also make up a much smaller portion of the market. So it is hard to tell exactly how they're doing, but generally they seem to be better with the current generation. So the last thing I want to talk about is maximizing your investment. The first thing you want to do after you get your new PC and you're installing SOLIDWORKS on it is you want to make sure all your Windows settings are optimized to run SOLIDWORKS. With a laptop especially, most of the out-of-the-box settings are going to be leaning towards power saving and battery life improvements rather than maximum performance. And we have a whole webinar we did last year on setting up 
Windows and even your BIOS and firmware settings to maximize performance for that machine. So I'd suggest if you haven't already looked through that, take a look at that. There's a lot of good suggestions for initial setup as well as ongoing maintenance and best practices to get the most performance out of that hardware. The next thing I would say is invest in training and resources to ensure that your designers are able to work as efficiently as possible. That doesn't necessarily mean a paid class. There's a lot of good free resources available. Our website's got a lot of articles and how-to tips and tutorials. There's built-in tutorials in SolidWorks, but take the time to make a plan for your designers, especially when you're onboarding somebody new. If you've got a new user coming in, make sure they've gone through all of the basic tutorials in SolidWorks and then pick out the most applicable ones from the advanced tutorial sets that make sense to their day-to-day -day job function. And that's going to help them be comfortable with the terminology and the user interface so that the kind of questions you get are going to be more of a design-related nature rather than just how do I, how do I get this done. And it's also going to help you to know that those designers are going to be as comfortable and effective as possible at doing their job. And lastly, I would say take some time to develop design processes that will help you increase consistency and reduce errors in your models. That includes the finished product. So we used to take some time each month and review any errors that we made or that our fabrication shop made from our drawings so that we could see if there's ways that we could either make things more clear on a drawing or design things better so that they're easier to manufacture. And if you take some time and set up some design rules, that makes the design process so much more consistent and repeatable that your designers can focus more on the actual problem solving rather than worrying about, is my computer going to crash? Am I going to end up having somebody get mad at me because they couldn't reach something to weld it? All, all that sort of thing. So the more we can get our systems working effectively and efficiently, the better results we're going to get long term and the more happy our employees and our teams are going to be. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please hang around, ask us any questions, or provide us with any feedback that you can. If you have any questions we can't answer immediately, we'll take those away, do some research, and get you an answer on those. We appreciate you joining us and hope this has been helpful to you.